What if I told you that you could stop eating for a day, two, or even three days and not only keep your muscle, but you might actually come out leaner, stronger, and have better insulin sensitivity? But then, what if you kept going? What if you didn't eat for a week or a month or longer? Well, you probably already assume that's when things change. In your mind, that's when your body stops burning fat and starts burning you. Your strength slips, your recovery slows, and the very muscle you work so hard to build becomes your body's emergency fuel. So where is that line where it goes from a net positive that helps you burn fat and reset to a full-blown negative? Well, today we're diving deep into what happens to your muscles day by day from one to three to seven and 30 and beyond. And we're not just talking about how your arms or your chest will look in the mirror. We're talking about what's happening at the microscopic level inside each muscle fiber and inside every cell as your body shifts from thriving to surviving. So let's start at the beginning. Day one, you've skipped breakfast, maybe lunch too. You're approaching the 16 hour mark or even pushing a full 24 hour fast. At this stage, your body is calm. Glycogen, the stored form of carbohydrates in your liver and muscles, is still available. In fact, your liver glycogen is being used to keep your blood sugar stable, especially for your brain. Your muscle glycogen is largely untouched unless you're doing intense physical activity, and your insulin is dropping. This is a good thing because it allows stored body fat to become accessible as energy. Around this time, your body begins increasing norepinephrine and growth hormone, both of which support fat mobilization and help preserve lean tissue. Research shows that growth hormone can increase up to five times during short-term fasting. This hormone has powerful anti-catabolic properties. It protects your muscles, assists with fat burning, and enhances recovery. So how are your muscles doing during those first 24 hours? Totally fine. Muscle size might look slightly reduced because glycogen stores begin to deplete and those stores hold water, so you might look a little flatter, but it's just a visual shift. Your actual muscle tissue is still there, totally fine. Strength and performance are mostly unaffected. You could do an intense full body workout day one and your body would still be in a state that prioritizes fat over muscle. Internally, your body is incredibly smart. It knows muscle is important, so early in the fast it uses glycogen, free fatty acids, and a little bit of glucose from non-muscle sources to meet energy demands. Muscle breakdown is barely noticeable. If anything, short-term fasting can be a muscle preserving tool, especially when you're training during the fasted state and refeeding with adequate protein after 24 hours of fasting. This is also the phase where your mitochondria starts adapting. Short-term fasting activates AMPK and increases the expression of a gene called PGC1-alpha, which stimulates the growth of new mitochondria in muscle. That means you actually get more efficient at producing energy, especially in endurance-based type 1 muscle fibers. It's like giving your muscle cells a tune-up before the stress of starvation really kicks in. Autophagy, which is your body's internal recycling system, will also start to increase. As you wrap up day one and day two, autophagy clears out damaged proteins and cellular junk, which is a good thing for longevity and metabolic health. And it doesn't really touch muscle proteins just yet. But now let's move ahead to day three. You've gone 72 hours without food. Your glycogen is now almost fully depleted. Your liver glycogen is gone. Your muscle glycogen is low. Your body's relying on fat derived ketones for fuel, especially for your brain. This is ketosis in action. It's an amazing system. Your body has adapted to starvation over millions of years and this shift towards ketones for energy allows you to function without food while preserving lean mass. At this stage, ketones help reduce the body's demand for glucose, and by doing so, those ketones reduce the need to break down muscle for energy. One of the most fascinating things about this stage is that ketones, especially a specific ketone body known as beta-hydroxybutyrate, actually suppress the enzyme that breaks down branched-chain amino acids like leucine. That means ketones help you spare muscle chemically, not just functionally. So are you still preserving muscle? Mostly yes. If you're healthy, carrying enough body fat, and staying hydrated, your body continues to prioritize fat for energy. The amount of muscle breakdown is minimal, especially if you're continuing to lift weights during this period. You might feel a little weaker during workouts due to low glycogen levels, but you're not shrinking just yet. However, your body does start tapping into amino acids for certain functions like immune defense, enzyme production, and tissue repair. And since you're not eating, those amino acids have to come from within. Some will come from skin, organ tissue turnover, and yes, a small portion from muscle. But the muscle loss here is minimal and easily recoverable with a proper refeed. Your body's demand for glutamine is actually a major reason why you lose a minimal amount of muscle during the initial three days. 
Your skeletal muscle actually contains a large reserve of glutamine, which your immune system relies on. When you're fasting, immune cells draw glutamine from muscle stores to keep functioning, which explains why even minimal muscle loss begins here, not for energy, but for survival support. Let's dig deeper though. What's happening inside the muscle? Well, mTOR, the pathway that drives protein synthesis, is dialed down. Your body isn't building muscle because it doesn't make sense to grow in a food-deprived state. Instead, AMPK is upregulated. In case you don't understand, this is a cellular energy sensor that increases fat oxidation and mitochondrial efficiency. Autophagy is still active, breaking down damaged mitochondria, misfolded proteins, and weak cellular components. This is definitely good. Autophagy at this point goes even a step further by targeting senescent or zombie muscle cells, the ones that are damaged and don't function properly. So this phase isn't just about holding on to muscle, it's about refining it, trimming the dead weight so the tissue that survives is higher quality. This leads most people to think that autophagy can only be good, but the catch is if the fast continues, that autophagy begins affecting more functional tissue. You're still not at risk at the end of day three, but the protective phase is quickly ending. By day seven, the preservation mode is stretched thin. Now your body has no external supply of amino acids. Your fat is still being used and ketones are still doing their job, but the longer you go without protein, the more your body has to make trade-offs. At this point, gluconeogenesis increases. This is the conversion of non-carbohydrates into glucose and the primary source for the conversion becomes your muscle tissue. The body breaks down muscle proteins into amino acids like alanine and glutamine, sends them to the liver and converts them to glucose for tissues that can't use fat or ketones. This includes red blood cells and parts of your brain. Performance takes a bigger hit here. If you try to lift heavy, you'll definitely feel it. Your reps drop, your recovery drags, and you may notice significantly more delayed soreness. This is also where you begin to lose measurable lean mass. Not a huge amount, but enough to notice in the mirror or on the scale. Muscle biopsies at this point would show a decline in protein synthesis, a reduction in muscle fiber cross-sectional area, and diminished activity of anabolic hormones like IGF-1 and testosterone. Cortisol remains elevated, which helps mobilize fat and maintains blood pressure, but it also contributes to muscle protein breakdown. At this point, your muscle tissue has become a supply depot, not fully pillaged, but no longer untouched. You may also see early signs of circadian disruption in muscle cells. So what does this mean? Well, your muscle operates on its own clock that syncs with feeding times and prolonged fasting disrupts this rhythm. Core circadian clock genes in muscle like BMAL1 and PER2 get disrupted, which can impair protein synthesis, weaken muscle contraction force over time, and potentially impair hormonal responsiveness. Now let's jump ahead to a bigger extreme. It's day 30. You've gone an entire month without food. At this point, we're well beyond short-term fasting. This is no longer a metabolic reset. It's a survival strategy. Your body has burned through most of its glycogen. It has relied heavily on fat and now it's increasingly leaning on muscle to stay alive. The visible effects are obvious. Muscle appears flat, stringy, and underfed. Your arms are thinner, your legs are smaller, and your chest looks caved in. Strength is significantly reduced. You're weaker, slower, and less coordinated. Even endurance work suffers because your body has lowered its basal metabolic rate to conserve energy. On a cellular level, things look bleak. Mitochondrial function declines. Myosin, the motor protein that powers contraction, is reduced. The neuromuscular junction where nerves meet muscles become less efficient. Capillary density decreases, which reduces oxygen delivery. The fat found within your muscles, otherwise known as intramuscular fat, it increases slightly, which impairs insulin sensitivity. And there's evidence that chronic fasting reduces satellite cell activation, which is crucial for muscle repair and growth. The longer you go without protein, the more your body slows down processes like protein synthesis, collagen turnover, and muscle fiber regeneration. At this stage, chronic AMPK activation is still trying to keep your cells alive, but mTOR is practically shut off. Without mTOR, your muscles can't grow, can't repair, and can't adapt. It's a flat line. Beyond 30 days, it's not just your biceps and quads at risk, it's your diaphragm, your heart, and your posture supporting muscles. These are critical for breathing, blood flow, and organ support. They all begin to shrink. While the common notion that fasting helps lower inflammation is true, since short fasts reduce pro-inflammatory cytokines in muscles like IL-6 and TNF-alpha, extended fasting actually flips the switch, so you wind up with more inflammation due to increased muscle-specific oxidative stress, 
breakdown of structural proteins like Titan, and even reduced satellite cell pool size, which means your muscles have fewer backup cells available to repair damage or grow, making it harder to recover or build new muscle over time. And here's another major counterintuitive problem. The longer you fast, the more sensitive your body becomes to refeeding, to the point that eating can become dangerous. A sudden reintroduction of carbohydrates, especially without electrolytes, can cause something known as refeeding syndrome, an extreme and potentially fatal condition where blood phosphate and potassium plummet, leading to cardiac issues, confusion, and even death. So not only do you lose muscle after prolonged starvation, but rebuilding it becomes a medically delicate process. Now let's talk recovery. If you break a fast at the right time, let's say after three days, your body rebounds fast. Protein synthesis resumes, mTOR is reactivated, your muscles sponge up nutrients with hypersensitivity, and if you eat enough protein, include electrolytes, and train intelligently, you can easily regain everything you lost, often with better insulin sensitivity and less fat. In fact, after short fasts, muscles exhibit improved glucose uptake and nutrient partitioning due to elevated insulin sensitivity and GLUT4 activity. GLUT4 is like a door on your muscle cells that opens up to let sugar in from your blood, and when it works well, your muscles get energy and your blood sugar stays balanced. But if you fast too long, this reverses. Your GLUT4 receptors downregulate and your muscles become less responsive to insulin, making it harder to store glycogen or recover in any meaningful way. This is one of the many reasons why if you break a fast after a long time period like 30 days, you need a slow ramp up. You can't just down a steak and squat 315 pounds. Your gut isn't ready, your muscles aren't primed, and your hormones are still suppressed. You need weeks, sometimes months, to rebuild. And even then, the risk of gaining more fat than muscle is higher due to your reduced metabolic rate. So here's the big takeaway from an application standpoint. Short-term fasting, one, two, even three days, can actually be protective. It enhances fat oxidation, boosts growth hormone, improves insulin sensitivity, and promotes cellular repair. As long as you're training, staying hydrated, and refeeding with protein, at some point within this three-day period, you'll retain your muscle and maybe even enhance it. But fasting is a tool, not a lifestyle. The moment it turns from short-term strategy into long-term starvation, your body flips the switch. It begins to burn muscle, not because it wants to, but because it has to. So this should all highlight that muscle isn't just tissue. It burns calories at rest, it controls your blood sugar, it holds your posture, it protects your joints, it gives you strength, balance, power, and resilience. And when you stop feeding it for long enough, you start spending it. So if you're gonna do a fast, do it intelligently. Train while fasting, break the fast with protein, stay hydrated, get your electrolytes, and most importantly, don't go so far that your body stops burning fat and starts burning you. Because when you understand what happens to muscles when you stop eating, you realize fasting can be your ally, but only if you know when to stop. So that about wraps it up. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, make sure you subscribe. And also, if you're looking for a done-for-you strategy that includes a personalized meal plan, a full workout plan, and a coach to help guide you, try my free six-week shred, where all you have to do is follow through, and not only do you get it all for free, but you get fully transformed in the process. To find out more, click the link below in the description, or you can head straight on over to my website at gravitytransformation.com. I'll see you guys soon.